create stunning landscapes in Unreal Engine, and bring your worlds to life from the ground up. This video is part of our Unreal Engine full course. Subscribe and check the playlist for more tutorials. In this lesson, I want to discuss landscapes. We've constructed our building. It's time to create the landscape. First, press Ctrl plus Shift plus S on your keyboard to save all the changes you've made throughout the project. Since we are moving to another aspect of the project, let's save our current project at another level, a different version of this level, so we can return to our scene and build upon it. If you make a mistake, we have something to fall back on. We can collapse all of these here as well. As you can see, I have an idea of how my landscape will look, but I need to start building it. To construct a landscape, you must go to landscape mode. When you enter landscape mode at the top, you will see a grid where your landscape will be situated. We have options like manage, sculpt and paint in the landscape mode. Managing is for creating a landscape. Sculpt is used to create hills and vary the high and low areas in the landscape, including mountains and other features. The paint section involves painting materials in different landscape areas, which I will discuss later. There are two ways of creating landscapes, creating them directly in Unreal Engine or importing them from a file. Importing from a file involves using a height map to generate the landscape. However, we will not explore this option at this point. You can also pick a material in advance if you have a specific landscape material or one you wish to use. You can apply this material now or after you create the landscape. The most important option here is grid size, which can increase the landscape size if we need more space. However, the original grid works fine for this training. When we hit create, it will create a landscape for us and immediately take us to the sculpt section. In the manage section, you will find options to add or delete areas of the landscape. The sculpt section provides options for sculpting the landscape. You won't see anything in the paint section because we have yet to apply any material. You'll see many sculpting options if I go to the sculpt section. The most important ones are sculpt, erase, smooth, flatten and ramp. The others are less used and you can explore them later on by yourself. Going through all of them doesn't make sense since there are so many options. Let's explore the sculpt options. You'll see an adjustable size and fall off brush when I bring the brush into view. If I just click, the landscape will rise. If I hold shift and click, it will lower. This simple technique allows you to shape your landscape. You can also adjust the strength of your movements. If you decrease the strength, each click will be less effective. If you increase it, each click will be more impactful. In the Erase section, you can erase what you've done. The Smooth option will smooth out your changes with other tools. For example, if you've made several changes, you can quickly smooth them out the brush settings will remain the same. The flatten option allows you to create flat areas where you select. The ramp option lets you create a ramp between two points. You can also control the ramp's width and fall off. Hit add ramp to add it to your landscape. Finally, Let's use the Erase tool to erase all my changes. You can also reset the brush's settings. Now, let's bring back the blocking and the building. Based on my views, I will create a landscape. I'm going to Sculpt mode, making my brush much bigger. I will click a few times to see my ground. Remember, you can always use Ctrl plus Z to undo. Now, I will change the size of my brush and build my landscape. Here, my goal is to create a lake. Remember, if you go to selection mode, for example, right now, I want to make this area much more prominent, so I have a reference point for the water area of my lake. If I go to landscape mode again, I can make changes. Holding shift to push it down and just clicking to bring it up takes a little time. I always switch to smooth mode to smooth out whatever I have created. 
Also, I frequently check my view to see how things are progressing. At some point, I won't need my block out anymore, so I can toggle it off and on. At this point, I'm happy with what I've made, and it matches my original idea quite well. The high points are higher, but we are in an excellent place to move on to the next step. For the next step, I will apply a material to my landscape. One point to note is that under Detail section of your landscape, you can also activate Nanite for the landscape. If you activate Nanite now, you must rebuild it here whenever you make any changes. If you see a weird shadow, it's nothing special. Just turn it off and on once and it should resolve. Now if I go to the Nanite visualization, I see that everything is Nanite. However, since we will adjust our landscape, we should hold off on enabling Nanite until we finish our project. Because if we make any small changes, we have to rebuild again. So we deactivate it for now. Right now, we know that we didn't upload the material at the beginning of the project. so. If I select my landscape in its details, you'll see a slot for landscape material. You can use any material for landscape material. However, if you want to paint different materials on a landscape, for instance, one side dry and one wet, you must use a specific landscape material. Creating landscape material is very complicated, and I'll explain it in my later courses, but right now, we can head to the marketplace to find some free. So, let's go to the marketplace. I have searched the marketplace for various landscape materials and found a useful one called Grass Landscape Material. This landscaping material uses seven layers on top of each other to paint different sections of your landscape with any of these. These materials support the engine version 5.3, but as I mentioned, I'm working with 5.4. Adding a material supported by a lower engine version to a project with a higher supported engine version is usually fine, but it doesn't work the other way around. I already downloaded this material and added it to my wallet. Now I'm going to add it to the project. When you look here, you will not see your project because it is done with 5.4. To see your project will hit show all of the projects. Here is your project. It says it's incompatible with your version and you must select the closest version 5.3. I will add this to my project. Since I already have it on my hard drive, the process is much faster for me. However, it might take a little time for you. If you want to see where your downloaded material is on your hard drive or remove it from your local drive, click here. But let's go to our project. In the content browser, I see another folder called Grass Landscape. It includes maps, materials, meshes, and textures. If I go to the map, you'll see a level with landscape examples for us to examine. I will use the standard version. The other two are advanced and we don't need them now. When you select this landscape, go to its materials section under its details and locate the applied material. The material instance assigned to it is inside the content folder. You can also find the master material from which this material instance comes right beside this. The rest of the items in this folder are material functions. Material functions essentially contain the logic behind the material that builds our master material. We will extensively explore materials in the later course. Let's go back to our level. While the landscape is selected in its details, we can assign the landscape material that we want here. I will find the material I want in the content folder. And everything turns white as soon as I apply it. If I switch to landscape mode now, you'll be able to see all the layers of my landscape material in the paint tab. Remember that where we were creating the landscape, we didn't have anything here. At the same time, you'll notice a message saying that this layer has no layer information assigned yet. You must create or assign layer information before you can paint this layer. I have to explain it a bit more. We have observed that landscape materials are different from other materials. For example, grass, rock, or mud can be stacked on top of each other in a landscape. Layer information comes into play to determine which layer we want to see in any part of the landscape. This information holds the details about the materials in each part of the landscape. 
deciding whether we want to see a particular material. This is achieved using a black and white image to mask out parts of that layer. By painting this black and white image, we can allow our landscape to show through and be visible. So, over there, we see landscape layers, but you can only paint them once you create an information layer. You can create an information layer by clicking the plus icon next to each weight blended layer. For this landscape layer, click the plus icon, weight blended layer, to create an information layer. This information needs to be saved. After choosing this option, you will be prompted to save it somewhere in your content folder. In our case, if you go to the content folder and inside the grass landscape folder, you'll find a folder called layer files, where they have already saved information layers for different aspects of this material. This saves us the trouble of creating and keeping the layers ourselves. You can choose each layer by its name when selecting and assigning layers. Selecting none will automatically display the layer with the same name created for this landscape. You can then simply select it. After I update the first layer, I can see it in my scene. Then, I will apply other information layers to other landscape layers so that I can later paint on top of the first layer. After applying all the information layers, if I select another landscape layer while in paint mode and then select a paintbrush, I can start painting different layers of this material on top of each other. Please note that you have various controls over your brush's shape, size and strength. If I select any of them, I can simply paint different layers of materials here. Also, I can pick a smooth brush to smooth the edges of the landscape I painted. If you right click, you have the option to fill the layer, clear it or rebuild it. Now that we understand how a landscape material works, we can begin painting our landscape. If you open the landscape material, you will notice that our landscape material instance has fewer parameters than the material we examined from the Megascan library. The creator of this material decided that we don't need those options. In a later course, I will show how we can create a landscape material with many options to control better how different material layers will appear. But for now, let's stick to what we have. As you can see, we just have control over the brightness. So I'm going to decrease the landscape brightness. I will use different layers to break out the repetitiveness of this material. I'm going to make one of the layers much darker and use it as the bottom of the lake. And I'm just going to paint other layers on top of each other to get something more interesting. When shooting this scene for a film, I'll focus on specific areas and use my creativity to make them attractive. I want to avoid unnecessary work and make the most of the visuals we're working with. I won't create the entire landscape for every angle, I'll just make something enjoyable for the angle I'm focusing on. At this point, I think we are done creating the landscape. I'll discuss water in the next lesson.